Hi, I'm Teresa Pahi, and now I am going to demonstrate gowning and how to put on surgical cap and mask. The surgical cap and mask are put on immediately before entering the operating theater. The cap is put on first. The cap should cover the ears and no hair should be seen extending the borders of the cap. Special caps called hoods or beard covers are used by surgeons who have long hairs, beard or sideburns to keep their hairs from escaping. The mask is put on next. The top tie should be tied behind the head while the bottom tie is tied behind the neck. Both ties should be secured such that air filters through the mask during breathing, while the breath cannot cause airflow out of the top, side, and bottom of the mask. <coughs> Coughing can force air out of the sides of a properly donned mask. Therefore, a surgeon should not turn his head to the side to cough, or else droplets will be directed at the sterile field. Some masks have a moldable band at the bridge of the nose which conforms the mask to the face. This would minimize the fogging of the eyeglasses. An alternative mask, which is somewhat a rigid mask, conforms to the nose and mouth. It has a single elastic band placed behind the head and is preferred by surgeons who wear eyeglasses because it prevents fogging of the eyeglasses. Gowning must be done from a surface separate from the sterile supplies and surgical table and patient to prevent dripping water or contamination. As you can see, my hands are lifted above the elbow after scrubbing to maintain sterility. Now, I'm going to lift the hot towel. The hot towel is lifted away from the sterile field without dripping water or touching the sterile field nor touching the scrub top to maintain sterility. Allow the hot towel to unfold on itself and then gently pat to dry the left fingers, arm, down to the elbow. With the towel in my right hand, I will go underneath the towel, grab its unused end to dry my right fingers, arms, down to the elbow. Discard the towel by giving it to a member of the non-sterile surgical team. Now, I am going to lift the gown. The gown folded inside out in the sterile pack is lifted away from the table. Step back from the sterile table to allow room for gowning. Look for the neckline and hold it while armholes are found, allowing the gown to unfold gently. Avoid shaking the gown to lessen the risk of contamination. Now, advance both arms simultaneously into the sleeves. The hands are kept within the cuffs of the gown to allow closed gloving. Lastly, an assistant secures the back of the gown by closing the neck fasteners and tying the inside waist tie. If a sterile back gown is used by the surgeon, the tie is secured after the surgeon has put on sterile gloves. This is the final look after gowning. Thanks for watching.